Happy Sunday! Welcome to English Worship. It is so good to see you. My name is Katie and I will be one of your hosts today. And if this is your first time joining us, we want to connect with you. So we're going to put a link in the chat box right about now. Go ahead, select that link. Fill out the form and someone from our leadership team will get in contact with you. We can't wait to get to know you more and hear some of your story. Everyone else, we still want this to be an interactive time. So be sure to say hello in the chat. We would love to welcome you as you're logging on. And if God's speaking something to you, go ahead and put it in the chat. If you have a prayer request, let us know. If you think something's on fire, like, Put a fire emoji or some praise hands. This is an interactive time together. We've got so much happening today. And if you're taking videos or, or pictures on Instagram, go ahead and tag us at English Worship Jogja. Don't be like me and forget to tag. I did that. Sorry, Sim. But go ahead and tag us so that we know what you're experiencing or what God is teaching you through this uh, time together. So we're going to go into a time of worship, and later we'll have a special guest joining us to share the Word of God. Are you ready for an awesome time together? Let's go! Hello, English Worship Online! Uh, welcome! We are so glad that you are joining us here and now. Let's worship the Lord, amen? Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever oh, This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified Testimony, this is my testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God. We'll finish what he started Our God will finish what he started oh, This is my testimony from dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony things 
are still to come. Oh, I believe this is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I believe this is my testimony. Wrote my story. I'm justified by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Amen. God is so good. We praise Him in this place today. In Mark 4, we find this story where Jesus and his disciples, they're on this boat, and then a storm happens, and it's crazy. The waves are huge. It's wild. And we see the disciples, and they're freaking out. And where do we find Jesus? He's asleep in the boat. He is so at peace and in control of this situation. He's sleeping in the boat. And then the disciples wake him up and he gets up and he says, why are you so afraid? And he turns to the storm and he says, be still. And the water goes calm. And as I was thinking about this scripture, I was like, wow, I serve a God who is so at peace and in control. He sleeps through the storm. So as we are here worshiping today, I want to encourage you. Remember, we serve the Prince of Peace. Whatever your circumstance, take this moment right here, right now, and remember who He is. Enjoy His presence. He is a good and faithful God. Hallelujah. We sing, we sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Oh. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes hope will arise Death is defeated, the King is alive I raise a hallelujah Nobody like you, Jesus. 
take this moment right now press in press in a little further oh jesus there's no one like you god there's no one like you oh you're the king above all kings the lord above all lords nobody like you jesus so nobody like you jesus oh glory to you god beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus thank you Jesus
crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me champion God there is none like you and nothing in this world in heaven or on earth can defeat you Jesus we give you all glory all honor all praise and yes God we receive the authority you have given us to be your ambassadors here to build the kingdom of heaven here we thank you for all you have done and all you are doing and all you will do in the powerful name of Jesus we pray all of this today amen amen thank you for joining us today I am honor I am the courage to compete with all my heart I am respect for a level playing field. I believe in us because we are building bridges. I am you, and together we can change the world. Hey friends, welcome to English Worship Online. This is Pastor Jamie, and it's so great that you were able to log in and join us here. Man, we are praying for you every day as a leadership team because we know this is just a strange time here in Jogja and really throughout Indonesia with the growing number of COVID cases. And the most important thing for you to know is this, that we care about you. And that's why we do what we do. That's why we're providing all these online activities and ways for you to connect because we want to, to make sure you feel a part of things even though we are doing um, kind of uh, this Pepe MK, Pepe MK or Pepe KM? No, I can't remember. Well, either way, I'm so glad that you're joining us today online. Hey, we have a special treat as we continue with this Let's Go series. Um, I've asked uh, a couple of people to help us to be different voices for us. Usually you hear from me or another staff person, but today you get to hear from one of my mentors. A couple weeks ago, you heard from Pastor Jeff. Today, you get to hear from Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave is the lead pastor at IES Jakarta. So those of you who are in Jakarta, if you're looking for a church, check out IES. It's one of my favorite churches that I've been to and that I've preached at. If you're, when you graduate and you move to Jakarta, Man, I think IS is a great place for you to be. So Pastor Dave is the lead pastor there, and uh, he has had such an impact and influence on my life. And I've invited him today to share with us uh, uh, from the Word of God so that he can have the same impact on your life as he has on my life. Would you welcome Pastor Dave? 
Hi, I'm really honored to have an opportunity to speak for you. It's my first time to ever speak in English worship, and I want to fit in with the theme that you've been following. And I know that you've been following a theme on discipleship and, and how to make disciples, and, and sometimes we learn best from examples. So I'm going to talk to you about the person I consider to be the best discipler in the New Testament, with the exception of Jesus. Of course, Jesus was the master disciple. And, and we see that in the lives of, his, of the people he discipled. But this is another character. I call him maybe one of the very, very best. And so we're going to take a look at him. I'm going to start off by introducing you to him. Now, we read about him mostly in the book of Acts. And I want to start off by reading to you some scriptures. And then as I read it, we're going to learn and understand how did he function as a discipler? Or what was it that we could see about him that was a discipler? The first thing we read is in Acts chapter 4. By the way, we're going to mostly be in the book of Acts, so if you're following along, take note of that. Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 7. It says, Joseph, called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of comfort, was a Levite born in Cyprus. He sold a field that he owned, he brought the money, and he made an offering of it to the apostles. Well, this is the first time we meet Barnabas in the Bible, and it's pretty interesting the things that it says about him. For one thing, they give him a nickname. Now, the disciples were really, really good about nicknames. His real name was Joseph. But anytime you ask somebody, even if they knew the New Testament a lot, and you say, what do you think about Joseph in the book of Acts? They'll say, who? Who's Joseph? They called him Barnabas, which means the son of encouragement or the encourager. And that's one of the things that we see about him. His nickname was that he was an encourager. And he was generous. He was eager to share when the new community of believers screw up, there were some people who were not able, to, uh, not able to have enough money for their daily needs, and he had some extra properties, so he sold it and he shared it around. Now, don't get confused. The, 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 the early church was not communal in its nature. It's just that those people who had shared with those people who didn't. Now, the next thing that we see as we go along in the book of Acts, we see that a guy named Saul, who's persecuting the Jews... And he's really doing a lot. He even gives authority for Stephen to be stoned. He has this religious authority. And he goes to Damascus. And on his way to Damascus, he's going there to punish Christians, to drag them off into prison. And on his way, he has this amazing encounter with Jesus. And he completely changes. He becomes a follower of Jesus. And he's so effective in Damascus that as he preaches in Damascus, people get mad at him and they try and kill him. I mean, this is really, really serious. And so he escapes and he heads back to Jerusalem. And you know what happens when he goes to Jerusalem? Nobody will accept him. Everybody thinks it's fake. They were all there. They, many of them saw Stephen put to death. Many of them saw all the things that happened. In verse 26 and 27 of, of Acts chapter 9, we read, Back in Jerusalem, he, Saul, tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They didn't trust him one bit. Then Barnabas took him under his wing. He introduced him to the apostles. He stood up for him and told him how Saul had seen and spoken to the master on the Damascus road and how in Damascus itself he had laid his life on the line with his bold preaching in Jesus' name. And after that, he was accepted as one of them, going in and out of Jerusalem with no questions asked, uninhibited as he preached in the master's name. Wow, that's really amazing. Everybody's afraid of Saul with good reason. Saul allowed Stephen to be killed, authorized the stoning of Stephen. Saul was grabbing people, throwing them in jail. He was maybe the, one of the first religious terrorists who struck against Christians. And nobody trusted him. But Barnabas went and found him and talked to him and learned his story. He gets to know Saul and he believes in him and he shares about Saul with others. This is really an amazing thing that we see. And what happens is the gospel is, is spread as far as Antioch. And in Antioch, which is a mixed city, so Jerusalem, they're all amongst the Jews. In Antioch, which is a mixed city, it has Jews, but it also has Gentiles. It begins to be shared with Gentiles. And the Gentiles begin to respond. And nobody knows what to do. The, they, they never expected Gentiles, people who ate pork, people who didn't follow their religious rules. How would they possibly begin to follow Jesus as the Messiah? But they went ahead. Some people from, from, uh, some people from different areas that understood the grace of God, they began to allow these, these, these Gentiles to participate. Well, 
In verse 22 and 24 in Acts 11, we read, When the church of Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw the evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy. He encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord because Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord. Now, what's this character? Barnabas is trustworthy. When they need somebody to go and investigate and find out what's going on, they've heard these rumors, and the rumors are not, they're a little bit complicated. And so they say, let's send Barnabas. We can trust him, and he'll investigate what God is doing. And more importantly than that, Barnabas was open to what God was doing. He could understand that Jesus, the, 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 that following Jesus was something that anyone could do. And he becomes a leader of what's going on in Antioch. Now, understand this about Antioch. Many of the cities in that region were very uh, not cosmopolitan in the sense that they were just small, different groups of people. Uh, Jerusalem was primarily Jewish and so on and so forth. Antioch was this big city, one of the most influential cities in the world at that time. If you want to, you can think of cities like like. like uh, Hong Kong or Paris or uh, uh, Cairo or, or London or places like that. And it's very mixed. And so he understood what was going on and he became a leader of what was happening and what was going on in Antioch. Now, after he's there for a while, we read in verse 25, it says, Barnabas went on to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. And both of them stayed there with the church for a full year teaching large crowds of people. And it was the first place in Antioch where believers were first called Christians. Now look at this. Barnabas is, sees what's going on. He's a leader of what's going on. And he has this idea to go get Saul. Now think about it for a moment. What's going on there is that Gentiles are becoming believers. And yet he goes to get Saul, who is so Jewish in his faith. But he has this idea. He sees the potential in, in Saul. He sees the potential in people. And he works to involve them in what's going on. Now, during this time, some prophets traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them was named Agabus. And he stood up in one of the meetings. And he predicted by the Spirit that a great famine was coming into the entire Roman world. This was fulfilled during the time of Claudius. So the believers in Antioch decided to send relief to the brothers and sisters in Judea. Everyone giving as much as they could. And as they did, they entrusted their gifts to Barnabas and Saul to take them to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. What do we see about Barnabas? Barnabas can be trusted with money. If there's going to be money handling going on, Barnabas is one of the ones that they trust. There wasn't a banking system. You couldn't transfer things, you know, put it in an ATM here and they pull it out of an ATM in Jerusalem. Money had to be carried by hand. There were robbers and, and, and people along the road that would steal. And whenever you have that kind of situation, there's always a possibility that somebody could just keep the money for themselves and tell others they were stolen. But Barnabas was trustworthy. He was somebody that they could trust to handle the money. And Saul was his companion. He had developed a working relationship with this guy. In verse 25 of chapter 12, we read, Barnabas and Saul, once they had delivered the relief offering to the church in Jerusalem, went back to Antioch, and this time they took John with them, the one they called Mark. So in Jerusalem, they delivered all of the money. They did what they were supposed to. They headed back to where they were supposed to be in Antioch, and they expanded their little group by bringing along John Mark. Now, if you read the book of Acts, you'll discover that John Mark is the nephew of Barnabas, and he's younger. And so they're bringing him along and they're adding him. He's always looking for somebody else to involve. His nephew, John Mark, now becomes a part of their team. And the Bible tells us that the, the congregation in Antioch was blessed with a number of prophets, preachers, and teachers. Barnabas, Simon, who's called Niger, Lucius, the Cyrenian man, an advisor to the ruler Herod, and Saul. So he's a part of a team. He's not a guy who's wanting everything for himself. He's a part of a team, and he's reaching out to bring people in. One day as they were worshiping God, it says in Acts chapter 13, they were also fasting as they waited for guidance. And the Holy Spirit spoke and said, Take Barnabas and Saul and commission them for the work I have called them to do. So when it came time to send out people, he was the, he was the one that put the team together, and they began to do this. 
Barnabas is the one that's chosen to be sent. Now, Acts chapter 13, it gets really interesting. I'm not going to read a whole bunch of it to you, but I, I just want to let you know what goes on. They, they travel to Cyprus, which is logical because Barnabas is from there, so he, he at least understands some things about it. They encounter a lot of opposition. And then when they overcome that opposition as they continue on their time, John Mark leaves him and he goes back to Jerusalem. Apparently he's homesick. Maybe, you know, maybe the, the, the life on the road is more difficult or apparently the opposition, but whatever it was, he abandons them as the word that's used in some places. And, the, and he goes back. And Paul also, in this period of time, becomes the leader of the group. So this is a really critical time. And one of the things that we see here is that Barnabas was willing to let his mentee, his student, Saul, now often called Paul, become the leader. Now, there's not, there's not a change in Saul, so they use a different word, Paul. Saul is his Jewish name, and when he's in his Jewish context, he's called Saul. Paul is his Roman name, and so as he travels in the Roman world, he uses Paul, and he's referred to that way. But Barnabas has been the leader all along, and all of a sudden, Paul, Saul, becomes the leader. They finish the trip, they return to Antioch, and, and, and some of the Gentile believers show up in Antioch and they're going to insist that those Gentile followers have to follow the Jewish law. Now this is, a challenge to, uh, this is a challenge to Paul and Barnabas because they've been preaching to Gentiles all this time. And so we read in Acts chapter 15, they all decide to go to Jerusalem and they're going to talk this over with the elders in Jerusalem. And it says Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them. The church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem accompanied by some local believers to talk to the apostles and elders about the question, can Gentiles become Christians without becoming Jewish first? That's the essence of that. Or if they can become Christians, do they also have to follow the Jewish laws? In verse 12, we read, everyone listen quietly as Barnabas and Paul told them about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among, through them among the Gentiles. Barnabas stands up for what is right. And we discover that he can be trusted by the crowd in Jerusalem. When he shares, nobody stands up and says, Barnabas is making up stories. No, he's a man whose integrity is well known. After some time, we read a little bit later in that chapter, after some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit every city where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers were doing. Barnabas agreed and he wanted to take along John Mark. Remember? his nephew that had abandoned them. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Paul's a, Paul's a tough guy. He doesn't want somebody along with him that he can't, can't uh, trust and can't follow him. And their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. And Paul went his own way. You know, this is kind of an interesting passage because Luke, who's writing this, he, he doesn't pretend. He doesn't cover up stuff. He doesn't say, oh, they agreed together. I'll go this way. You go that way. You know, everything will be fine. No, they had a, they had a fight. They had a, such a sharp disagreement that they couldn't work together anymore. And so Barnabas, because of this dispute, goes a different way. And that happens. We can understand that it happens. Just because we're, we're people who are following God and serving God doesn't mean that we'll always get along with other people. And of course, we need to limit the damage that's done in those disagreements. In this case, it's kind of not a lose, it's a win. You might say this is a win, win, because Paul goes one way and he takes Silas with him and Barnabas goes another way and he takes John Mark. Of course, it's not really the end of the story, but it is kind of interesting because Paul goes on and he has two more missionary trips, and he does so much for the gospel. He, he plants churches, he writes so many epistles in the Bible, and, and Luke is with him, and Luke has firsthand experience of all those things. And we don't really hear about Barnabas again. But you see, there's something else that we do hear, that do hear about, and this is what's consistent with the character of Barnabas. This is what makes him the master discipler. You hear about Mark. Later on in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, where Paul is, has really been through some very, very difficult thing. And, and some, some Bible scholars believe that he's actually writing 2 Timothy just before his death. And he's in prison and he's going through those things. He says, only Luke is with me. 
Bring Mark with you when you come, for he will be helpful to me in my ministry. Bring Mark. That's John Mark. He's asking Timothy to send, to bring John Mark with him when he comes, because Mark will be helpful for him. You see, this is what we discover about Mark. We understand from this that Barnabas was at least partly right about John Mark's potential. He believed in John Mark enough that he wanted to bring them along. He wanted to discipline him. He wanted to raise him up. And we know that he did a good job because we see him. This character of John Mark not only served Paul well, he also served with Peter. We understand from the, the traditions of the church that he was Peter's companion for many years and he heard the things that Peter told and he wrote them out. And John Mark is also the one who wrote the gospel of Mark in the Bible. What did we learn about Barnabas that made him such a great discipler? What were the great characteristics that he had? How can we also, what can we also do to be great disciplers? Number one, we need to be an encourager. Do you encourage people? That was his nickname, son of encouragement. Wow, wouldn't that be great if you were known as it by a nickname because you were so good at encouraging? If you want to disciple people, if you want to make disciples, people who will follow Jesus, you need to encourage them. Correction without encouragement is not going to make somebody into a disciple. You need to be generous. You need to be eager to share. You need to be the kind of person who will not be thinking about their own value that they can acquire, but be eager to share with others. You need to reach out to others. Be an encourager. Be generous. Reach out to others. Barnabas discipled Paul and Barnabas discipled John Mark from his two disciples, and I'm sure there were others. We get most of our New Testament. The Apostle Paul wrote about 25% of the words of the New Testament, and Mark wrote about 8% because he wrote the Gospel of Mark. That means that one-third of the New Testament, the Word of God, came from his two disciples. That's very, very trustworthy. That's very, very impressive. Be trustworthy. He was trustworthy to investigate. He was trustworthy with money. Be trustworthy. Let people know that you can fulfill the things that you're supposed to fulfill. Be open to what God was doing. You know, one of the biggest problems in the early church was they didn't know about this, whether Gentiles could be part of what had been a holy, completely Jewish enterprise. Jesus and all his disciples were Jews. It all happened in a Jewish context. He was a fulfillment of Jewish scripture. And yet all of a sudden, God breaks everything open and he allows all of us to to, to participate in the message and the the understanding of Jesus Christ. And took a lot of people that couldn't understand it. But he was open to what God was doing. Be open to what God is doing in your surroundings and your circumstances. Understand that the gospel is for everyone. And make sure that as a discipler, you disciple people to understand that they need to share the gospel. Now, this is really a tough one. Be willing to let others become more prominent. Be willing to let others become more prominent. This is really, really important, you know. I mean, yeah, Barnabas you might have heard of. His real name is Joseph. If I had asked you about him, you probably would have known. If I said, Paul, Saul, oh, you know that guy really, really, really well. But where did he get his start? When a guy named Barnabas encouraged him and brought him in and then was willing to allow him to become more prominent. It's one of the problems that you have when any ministry is growing. There are a lot of people who are really enthusiastic when they're in charge, but sometimes other people come along. You know, in the earliest days of IES, uh, we, we, were, we were growing, we were small, but the Lord was doing some good things. And, and we had some very good musicians, but we had a very limited supply of good musicians like we had people who could do this and I can't mention what particular instrument but people who could play this and people who could play this but there was one instrument we were having a hard time with and somebody joined and they could play that instrument and wow we were all excited and and they were a nice person they seemed to fit in well they had a lot of good ideas and and then somebody else joined that was better at that instrument now you understand in a church when, we're, when we're, we're preparing to minister to people, we need to involve people. And all of a sudden, the one person that had all these great ideas and, and always was participating wasn't the only one playing that instrument anymore. And they left. They went to another church. Now, they said they went because that other church needed somebody to play, but 
I think the real reason is they weren't willing to let somebody be more prominent. It's tough. But if you want to be a discipler, you have to allow the people that you disciple to flourish and grow, and you have to be willing to step aside when they grow and pass you in different ways of prominence. Like Barnabas, you need to stand up for what's right. And like Barnabas, you need to know that you don't give up on others. These are the characteristics that we see of a person who is a master discipler, a great discipler. It's wonderful to be inspired by all of these things and all of these people. But I want each and every one of you to take a look at this list of things and understand what it needs to be or what needs to happen so that you can be a discipler of other people. And cultivate these characteristics in your life, in your Christian walk, in your everyday walk. Let me pray for you so that you can fulfill the promises and the plans that God has for you. Father, I lift up each of these people who is listening and participating in this service today. I pray, Lord, that they would be challenged to understand more about your word and to look in the book of Acts and understand about how you worked in the lives and hearts of people. And I pray that they would be encouraged by the example of Joseph from Cyprus, who was called the son of encouragement, Barnabas, because he was such an encourager and became a master discipler. Father, it would be our wish that we could follow in his footsteps, that we could spot people who have potential, that we could encourage them and lift them up, and that even, Lord, we would not only be trustworthy, but we would be willing to step aside and see somebody else become more prominent than us. I pray that in this group of people who are hearing your word, there will be a number who will become master disciples and raise up disciples for the kingdom of God, disciples for Jesus everywhere they go. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, what a great word from Pastor Dave. Thanks so much, Pastor Dave, for sharing with us and, and really challenging us. Man, I my prayer is that we would be disciples who make disciples. And so let's take, take this moment and just allow God's Spirit to speak to our hearts, to bring transformation to our hearts. Because I don't want you to just hear another sermon and I want you to, to experience the presence of God because when we experience the presence of God, man, it brings transformation. I'd rather have you hear one word from God than a thousand sermons from me. So what I want to do is, is invite you, if you've never made that decision to follow Jesus with your life, it's as easy as A, B, C. It's, as, it's that simple. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus. Commit to following him. And the Bible says that, that if you do that, you will be saved. That anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you do that, you know that you will be welcomed into God's family. I want to pray blessings on you because I want you to walk in the peace and in the presence of God this week. Would you lift your hands now to receive the blessing of God? Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. And I bless my brothers and sisters now. I bless their uh, their finances that everyone uh, would know the provision of God so that they could be blessed, so that they could be uh, a blessing to others. I pray for their friendships and their families that that everywhere they go and everyone they meet that would, would sense the presence of God is with them. And, and more than anything, Lord, I pray that you'd bless their futures, that everyone watching and everyone listening would know that their best days are still in front of them. Bless them now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And everyone says together, Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Hey, please DM me or another person on leadership team if you need prayer. We're here all week long to pray with you. Connect with uh, every night. We have something happening on Zoom and online. We want to make sure you stay connected because we care about you. God bless you guys. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Dave, for that incredible message. We are so thankful that you shared with us today. Just a reminder, if this is your first time joining us, you can fill up this link here and someone will get in contact with you later on this week. Guys, I've got a few announcements for you today. 
Are you ready? As you know, we have so many different things happening on Instagram and on Zoom. So don't miss out on these things. You can follow us at English Worship Jokja on Instagram or at English Worship News in your WhatsApp group. If you're not in the WhatsApp group, you can contact someone on our leadership team and we will add you there where you'll see what's happening all week long. Now there's one thing I really want to highlight this week and that is Alpha. This Here at Alpha, we want to encourage you, we want to empower you as you explore your faith and um, equip you to go and share it with others. So we meet on Mondays at 6 p.m. on Zoom and you can DM someone for the Zoom link or DM our Instagram for the Zoom link. We can't wait to see you there. It's Mission Sunday! So every month we want to focus in on missions and give you the opportunity to give in this area. We have made a commitment to give one juta every month towards missions. And this is impossible without you guys. So your missions giving is going towards Indonesian missionaries that are serving outside of Indonesia. So you're making a global impact, you guys. This is huge. So the way that you can give is very similar to how you would give for your tithes and offerings. But be sure that in the memo you write missions so that we can make sure it goes to the missionaries that we're supporting. Thank you guys for being so generous uh, as we give to missions. We still want to give you the opportunity to be generous with your tithes and offerings. And so we're going to leave the bank transfer information in the chat as well as on the screen along with a QR code that you can scan to use for Shopee Pay, GoPay, OFO, and anything else that might be connected to that QR code. You guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for being so generous and faithful in this time. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. That's all we have for now. But remember to stay safe and stay connected. Be blessed and be a blessing this week. We love you guys.